Hey, this is Joe from Personas. Today we're going to talk about what this button does on the compressor plugin in Studio One. So, Stereo Link seems pretty self explanatory, and in typical Studio One helpful fashion, if you just hover over a setting, it a lot of times will tell you what it does. So, this one detects the stereo average. But, okay, what does that really mean, and should it be on or off? Well, I'm going to show you how to answer those types of questions because a lot of this you can just test it for yourself and see what's happening so let's do that now so I've got a drum section here and this is what it sounds like so it's just a it's the end of a section and there are some tom hits you can see those back behind here and it's specifically the low tom and the snare that are being hit so blah 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 so you've got the low tom panned all the way to the right snare up the middle and it sounds like this and just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to turn off the overhead and the room mic just so we're getting all the spot mics of the drum kit. So you can hear that that is right heavy, correct? Um, and I don't have any compression on here yet. I like to compress my drum bus. So what does this stereo link do? And has it, is it, does it have an effect on how the drums sound when I compress them? Uh, the answer is yes. It's actually really cool and surprising. But first, this is the level meter. I've just got this uh, coming right after the compressor. And people ask me this all the time. Um, how do I get my level meter to be horizontal like you have in some of your videos? It's really easy. You just drag the corner of the plugin. So not all plugins can be resized, but the level me meter can because sometimes you want to move it around. So I've gone through seasons where, so with it like this, the meters go left to right, which is it's not like it's a problem. But if we go here, we can have it nice and tall. And what I sometimes do is put it over here on the edge of my screen and have it be the full height. And we can switch between K20 and all that stuff. So uh, I'm going to put this not over here, but a little smaller here so we can see what's happening. So if we look at this, this loop is just playing over and over, <laughs> which is super annoying. Uh, but we can see, obviously, the right side is louder than the left. That's, that's a given, okay? What happens when we turn the compressor on? Well... First of all, let's see if the stereo link is on. It is, and in my compressor, it's on by default. I think that's the default way that it works. Um, but let's turn it on and just see what that sounds like here. So typical, it's pretty aggressive for the sake of demonstration. Drum compression, it's making everything tighter. You can hear like every all the quiet stuff is getting louder, so we hear the, the resonance of the drums more. It's all just tighter and together. Now, listen to what happens when I click the stereo link off. And then I'm going to explain what happened. Actually, let me explain it real quick first. So as it says here when we hover over it, it is, come on, show me. Come on. There we go. It detects the stereo average. So when you think about a compressor, it's if this is a stereo compressor, which Studio One just automatically makes it stereo if it's on a stereo bus, which this is, right? There's a left side and a right side. We can hear that tom on the right-hand side. So when you put a compressor on there, it's technically two channels of compression, right? This makes sense in the outboard world. If I want to run my mix or my drum mix through this really cool outboard compressor that I have, if it's a single channel compressor, I can't run a stereo mix through it, right? Just kind of common sense. It needs to have a left side and a right side. Or I need two of those compressors, and I treat one as the left and one as right. Now, if you're familiar with outboard gear at all, you may have seen that some of these compressors you can buy, especially single channel ones, will have the option to link it with a second one so that it can become like a stereo compressor. And that link is essentially what's happening here. Or if you have a stereo compressor that has a button or a switch to go from kind of a dual mono compressor style to a linked stereo compressor, that's it's doing the same thing here. So what is that doing? So if we leave it alone, if we just have one compressor on the left and one compressor on the right, what happens? Well, the left is only listening to the left and the right is only listening to the right, and they're both only compressing the left and the right. So initially you might think, well, that's a good idea, right? So I don't want to compress the... Why would I want to compress, for example, this tom is wailing away in our right ear. Why would I want to compress the left side if it's only the right side that's being hit? And on paper, 
that makes sense. But in reality, if you have the two compressors working independently, depending on what you're trying to do, but in this instance, I don't like that sound as much because what happens is the, so let's say I'm switching my hands. This is the right, this is the left. Let's say this is louder, like we see in the meter. This compressor, let's say my hands are the compressors, this compressor is gonna be compressing a lot more. What does that mean? Okay, that means this side is gonna be quieter, which means this side's gonna be louder in that, at least in those moments where the compressor is compressing. So what what will that do? What do you if you had to guess, what would the end result be of the sound? Uh, let me play it for you and then I'll tell you. Here we go. So if you're listening to this and other people are hearing it and saying, what are you listening to? Just tell them it's Joe Gilder and sorry. Um, if two A couple things you can see here. First of all, you could see a little bit. It's not as obvious on the meters as I thought it was going to be. So when I turn the compressor off or when I turn the stereo link off, um, we can see that these kind of average levels are a lot closer. The left side isn't louder than the right, but it is. If we turn it back on, we can see now the right side is a lot louder than the left. Um, but when we stereo, unstereo link them, then they're kind of working independently. Stereo linking means, I'm sorry I haven't explained this well, we turn stereo link on, it means it's literally listening to both sides, taking an average, and then compressing both sides based on that. So it's kind of the, the greatest common denominator sort of a situation where if this side gets really loud, both sides get compression. And while that seems backwards, listen to what happened. If you heard it, the, when I turned the stereo link off, the snare drum moved to the left. Why did that happen? Because when the stereo link is off, each compressor acts independently, which means when that tom is hitting, this compressor is clamping down, this one not so much. So this right channel gets turned down by the compressor while this one doesn't, which gives the, the perception that this one got louder. So if the snare is in both channels, because it's a mono signal mostly panned right up the middle, then if we turn down one side, the other side's gonna feel louder. Listen to it again. So the end result is the right side, to my ear, sounds the same both ways, but it's the left side that gets kind of jacked up because the right side is getting the same compression pretty much either way, but the left side gets it in one scenario and doesn't get it on the other, which makes it be this lopsided thing. So what'll happen is with a stereo linked, when it's not stereo linked, you'll have certain things get kind of lopsided and it'll mess with the stereo image. So it starts to kind of dance and move around, which in this instance isn't good. So the obvious next question is, when would I want to unlink them? And for me, I, from a musical standpoint, I'm just so used to the sound of it linked that I can't really think of one. But I would suggest probably it'd be a scenario where there's a problem that we're trying to fix. So let's say there's a, there's a, a stereo mix that we have or a stereo drum mix or a stereo loop, and we can't get in there and adjust one side over the other. And so one of the solutions we could try to use is a compressor where its stereo link is off. So there's a left compressor that's catching some really loud stuff that's coming through that's, that's really bad for the mix. We don't need to compress the whole thing. We just want to say, hey, that loud thing that came through, knock that down without touching the rest, essentially, is what's happening. So that's more of a utilitarian thing. I could see it used more if you're doing like sound for film and Foley, or you've got sound effects or explosions and things like that, and you're trying to kind of just manage volume on either side without one side affecting the other, right? Like someone's over here saying, help me, help me, and, some, and a bullet goes off over here. You don't want the loudness of that bullet to turn that voice down, so you wouldn't want those compressors linked, if that makes sense. Um, and if that's all going to a single stereo bus, you'd want them maybe separated for that. It's really interesting. Now, I don't do any, any sound for film, so I may be completely off base here, but that's the one use case I can think of. Otherwise, leave the stereo link on. I think typically that's going to probably give you a more musical result. But as with all things, now that you know what it does, try turning it on and off in different scenarios and see maybe you'll end up kind of accidentally happening upon a really cool sound and you can kind of add that to your arsenal of different tools to use with just the stock compressor in studio one i went years with only using this compressor as my main compressor and i was able to 
manipulate lots of different sounds just with this bad boy. So that's not even including all the cool stuff we can do with Fat Channel. So Compressor is a wonderful tool, and if you haven't messed around with the stereo link button, go do so. Have some fun with it. Thanks for watching. See ya.